Hey everybody, Kyle Goth here from GoatFilmReviews.com and the Goat Film Reviews YouTube channel, and I've got my quick reaction to the new film, the 2023 release, Insidious the Red Door, directed and starring Patrick Wilson. Um, this is the fifth installment in the Insidious franchise. It is the uh, third film to feature the Lambert family. We, we last saw them during Insidious Part Chapter 2, and then for 3 and 4, we kind of stepped back and did prequels based around Elise and kind of when she started doing her different stuff. So... I, I tend to enjoy more when a franchise is moving forward than when they move back. I'm not I'm not opposed to prequels, and I think Insidious 3 and 4 are entertaining enough. Um, but I would have rather gone back to the Lamberts, because I do think that this franchise started with them as the central focus. And I do think it's important that we get that kind of conclusion to their story and move the narrative forward a little bit. I understand there is another Insidious movie, another spinoff coming out next year, the year after, called Threads, an insidious tale. But that's going to have Mandy Moore and Camille Nanjiani working in it, and I don't think it's going to be connected to this, but kind of just featuring the same ideas. Um, I'm okay with that, but I like the idea that the Red Door will be kind of this conclusion, this five-film arc, returning it back to the characters that were most important. Um, most everybody who can come back for this film does come back for it. I was actually really impressed with the amount of, of continuity that they that they were able to hold with that. Um, and it skips ahead nine years. Of course, Dalton is now going to college. Um, uh, Josh has divorced his wife. He's not really in the picture with the family as much as he'd like to be, um, which is it's tragic. And it, it kind of comes back to that legacy sequel thing where, you know, it's, it's been almost 10 years since that first film. It's been over 10 years since that first film. So revisiting these characters, you get that kind of like, yeah, things are not going well in the main character's life. That's a legacy sequel for you. And that's true here as well. But I do think that... More often than not in legacy sequels, they don't really get to the whys, and the character doesn't do any growth until the last possible minute. Well, in this one, it's not exactly the case. Josh wants to be involved. He wants to figure things out. And it's a tragic tale because he is still suffering the effects of what happened to him in, in Cities 1 and 2. So coming back to him with the red door, he is a character who's struggling because he kind of was at the end of the second film. We, you know, we, we put a Band-Aid on what was going on, but he didn't really solve the problem. And I think that's what's kind of cool here. Um, his directing choice, he's a first-time director on this film. This was a good idea for him to direct this film because it is a smaller story. It is a father and son story, other elements at play there. But I do think this was a simple enough task for someone who's worked on two of the Insidious films. He's worked with James Wan what, six, seven times, I think? I, I I've lost count of how many films they've done together. Um, this is a good idea for him to have taken everything he's learned in his career, watching the directors that he knows, and he's worked with a lot of different directors with very different styles. This is a good idea. Um, so that's what he kind of did here. And I think that, for the most part, he gets good performances. He's able to keep the film storyline moving. Um... He's got some interesting cinematography flair from, from working um, alongside his DP. Uh, the lighting, I have some issues with the lighting because sometimes the film is darker than it needs to be. And it's not like pitch black all the time, like Alien vs. Predator Requiem. But it's like every scene, not every scene, a lot of scenes feel like they could have just been a little bit lighter without being you know, blown out with light. But some of them are just a little dark and they're kind of just, yeah, they just don't really look appealing, I guess. Um... You know, sequences where there could be a little extra light and it doesn't mean anything, but it would just look, the, the picture would look a little bit better. Um, I think he worked well with Joseph Bashara, um, who has done all the music for this franchise. I think this is one of the better scores. I like Bashara's work, but Bashara tends also to overhit those string elements. And it's almost like the jump scares in the film have permeated into the, the musical score. Well, that's not the case here. There are jump scares, absolutely, but they're not part of the music. The music is not the part that was, dun, 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 you know, and that was one of my biggest flaws, kind of, even with the original Insidious, is that that musical score, which I think is a strong musical score, that's just in too invasive in the storyline. I think there's an improvement here to be said for that. Um, there are some issues, though. I mean, the screenplay is from Scott Teams, um, who I think is, I've seen Scott Teams write things that I've enjoyed. Uh, he co-wrote Halloween Kills, which, you know, you may hate it. A lot of people do, but I think it's the best Halloween film since the original. Um, he co-wrote that, and I think there's a lot of a lot of good stuff in Halloween Kills. But again, it is kind of overwritten, so I don't know if that was him or anybody else involved. Um, he also wrote the Firestarter remake, a movie that I think was quite dreadful. I think it's a bad movie, and it, it 
Firestarter was an, not an easy movie to remake, but it was a good idea to remake because the original film could have been improved upon, and they didn't. They made a worse film, um, and I think a lot of that comes down to Scott Teams' writing there. So here, I don't think that the... There's issues with this one, like with identifying the entities, if you will. Every Insidious film has entities. Each one, and everyone has like kind of a central one, and then they have these backup ones. You know, the first film was the lipstick demon. The second film was the the lady in black, I think is what they called her. And then there was the the like smoking cancer demon, and then there was the key demon in the fourth one. Each film has one central demon, and they've got like kind of tertiary ones. This film kind of just reuses a lot of the other stuff. And to a lesser effect. And part of that is going to be on Patrick Wilson's directing. Um, he could have improved upon that. I think it's a good directing job overall, but he could have done better. Um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Ooh. Um, I might have COVID. I've tested twice. Who knows? Neither can or there. Um, I'm, pretend I'm, I'm basically living my life as if I have COVID right now. So um, as far as the writing goes, like... The lipstick face demon returns. There's a couple other demons from the, the franchise that return. Then there's also these like secondary demonic entities that I that don't really they don't really I don't know what they are. You know, specifically in the finale of the film, there's like two or three of these things that crawl out of the woodwork and and I, I don't really know what they are, what they're supposed to be. I don't know their story. Whereas the first Insidious, when he's going through the house and the further, each room kind of has a story. Like you kind of understand the beginning, middle, and end of all of these different characters and why these entities are in the further. I didn't get that with a lot of the side ones here. So that's missing. Um, I think there is... There's a lack of tension in the writing and, again, in the directing. A lot of it relies on jump scares, but they don't really build the tension to even make the jump scares as worth it. I criticize it, but overall, I, I try not to criticize scares too much because, honestly, I just things don't scare me that much. So if I criticize something that doesn't scare me, I'm going to be criticizing every horror movie. And, and I like movies. I would like horror movies regardless of whether or not they scare me. Um, so those are my kind of initial ideas on it. I'm going to have to kind of wrap my head around it. I would say if of the five Insidious films, it's probably my number four on my ranking. Um, but I don't dislike any of them. And I, I think this one ends strong for the characters. And it leaves the door just open enough for further adventures with other characters. But I think we've seen the last of the Lamberts, and I think that's a good thing. I think we've given them their happy ending, um, or maybe we haven't, but we've given them their send-off as characters. Um, and they, they, they're allowed to kind of move on to the next portion of their life. Um, I love really what they do with the relationship between Josh and Dalton. <coughs> Sorry, folks. I love the relationship between Josh and Dalton. I think the way that they've we're catching up with them nine years later works pretty well. Um, but yeah, solid first time directing from Patrick Wilson. It's not something that's going to win him Oscars, but um, if he wants to keep doing it, I'm not I'm not going to uh, avoid films directed by Patrick Wilson. I'll say that right now. Um, yeah, so let me know your thoughts on Insidious, The Red Door, down in the comment section below, and give me your ranking of the five Insidious films down below as well. I'd love to hear about that, um, especially because I do think this is a franchise where any one of the installments could be somebody's favorite. I feel that, and uh, I think every one of them could be somebody's least favorite as well. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I'd love to engage with you down in the comment section. Make sure while you're down there that you like and subscribe. There are two free things you can do that help to support the channel immensely, and you never miss new episodes of the show as they drop.